Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Midnight Special. So Midnight Special is written and directed by Jeff Nichols, and he is the same director that brought you movies like Take Shelter and Mud. The film stars Michael Shannon, Joel Edgerton, Kirsten Dunst, Adam Driver, and Jaden Lieberher, the same kid from St. Vincent with Bill Murray. And the film is about when Michael Shannon, who plays this paranoid father, he's protecting his son, he's out on the run along with Kirsten Dunst and Joel Edgerton because the government is after the kid because this kid holds these very special powers. And when I went to Midnight Special, I couldn't wait to see this film. I was actually very excited for this film and I really wanted to see this film because I thought Jeff Nichols did a really great job with Mud. That's one of my favorite movies of 2013 to be honest. I haven't seen Take Shelter but I have heard so many great things. I really hope to check out that film soon and after seeing Midnight Special all I'm gonna say is that yeah, the film wasn't quite what I hoped it would be, to be perfectly honest. Now, I appreciate this film. I'm going to say that. I appreciate this film. It was a simple sci-fi flick. I appreciated what Jeff Nichols tried to do here as far as writing goes. But, unfortunately, Midnight Special just didn't quite give me what I was hoping for. Now, first thing I got to say about Midnight Special is that the performances are great. Michael Shannon, Adam Driver, Kirsten Dunst. Great to see her because I don't really get to see her in a lot of movies, so it's nice to see her here. Um, Joel Edgerton, and like I said, Jaden. The last name I'm not going to bother mentioning because I always mispronounce that, but <clears throat> they were all really great here. Michael Shannon, I thought, did a really great job of playing this paranoid father. You can see in his eyes that he really, truly cares for his kid and that he is willing to do anything just to make sure that his own kid is safe. Kristen Dunst does a good job in this film as well. I do think maybe they could have given her a little bit more to do, but I say she's been given enough to kind of shine in this film, but she does do a good job. Joel Edgerton plays the friend of Michael Shannon. He is his Texan friend, so it's pretty interesting to see Joel Edgerton with the Texan accent, but I really liked him here. Adam Driver, who I do think has the most interesting character, he was honestly really great in this film and he does kind of break away from playing like Kylo Ren in the Star Wars movies or This Is Where I Leave You. Any films that he has been in recently, he definitely breaks away from those roles. And there were times where I didn't really see Adam Driver in this film, to be perfectly honest. He's the one that works for the government and he tries to track down the kid. And I'm not going to go too further with his character. But all I'm going to say is that his character was very interesting. Cinematography in the film, oh my word, it looks phenomenal. I mean seriously, this is some of the best cinematography I've seen this year. It's so beautiful. The nighttime, especially in the freaking nighttime, it looks spectacular. I'm not kidding you, when the movie opens, because the movie opens in the nighttime, it was honestly so relaxing. When I'm relaxed, looking at the nighttime, in a movie, what does that tell you? Honestly, the cinematography blew me away. That's definitely one of the highlights about Midnight Special. It is gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, it still looks great in the daytime, but just when it gets to nighttime, just my word, just wow. And speaking of spectacular, the score in this film is also fantastic. I love the score for Midnight Special. It's very memorable. It's very soothing. I like the piano to it. Like the way it just goes boom, 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 boom. Oh, so good. And it really fits for the atmosphere of the film. There are honestly some great moments between Michael Shannon and Jaden. There were some very heartwarming father-son moments that were 
honestly, they were pretty powerful. There were unfortunately not enough of those moments, but when they were there, honestly, I found myself pretty captivated when it got to those moments. The film looks really great visually. I really liked how it looked. Not gonna spoil the climax, but I'm gonna say what happens in the climax was pretty mind-blowing. I actually had my jaws drop at this certain moment that happens in the climax and you all probably know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie of course but I'm just gonna leave it at that. That certain moment in the climax was honestly pretty terrific. Jeff Nichols I thought he did a really great job directing the film and in some spots of the film I did feel like his writing really shined. There were definitely moments of just pure great Jeff Nichols. There were times where I actually watched a great movie because of Jeff Nichols' writing. And this is not an action-packed movie. This is actually a slow burner. So if you're not a fan of slow moving movies, I don't really think Midnight Special is the movie for you. You have to really like pay attention to details. The movie doesn't do a whole lot of explaining, so you do have to really pay attention. But honestly, Midnight Special being a slow burner, I wasn't really bored. I actually thought it was a very well-paced movie. Even if the storyline, you know, it can get I'm going to get more into the storyline when I get to my negatives, but I mean, even with the storyline being iffy, I was never really bored watching Midnight Special. In fact, I would say, even with its iffy storyline, I still was interested to see where the film was going. As for the action, not a whole lot, but when it's there, it's really good, it's very well filmed, and honestly, yeah, it, it's just shot very well. Unfortunately, I do have a lot of problems with Midnight Special, and, you know, I do praise this film. Like, it sounded like I was praising this film because there are some aspects I truly do praise in this film. But the problems I have with the film is that it does feel repetitive, as far as where it's moving with the storyline. Like, characters are out on the run. They're moving from one location after another. Something happens and they move to another location. Then something happens and they move to another location. You know, it kind of goes in that route um, over and over again and it does feel like the same old, same old. Michael Shannon, he is very good in the film, but there were moments, just some moments, where I just thought he was okay, like, his character was very wooden. I don't know if the script told him to just be wooden, but there were some moments where, even though for the majority of the movie he was very good, some moments of the film I did feel like he was wooden. As for Michael Shannon, his character, it's hard to get behind his character, honestly, when he makes some very questionable decisions. and. Like, look, I know he's trying to protect his kid and all, but some of the stuff he does, he does take it too far. And I know he's, like, very paranoid, but, but god damn, dude. Even Joel Edgerton in one scene actually points out how far Michael Shannon is going in the film. And when he said it, I'm all like, thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one thinking this. Yeah, you're gonna make questionable decisions, you're gonna do anything to protect your kid, but some of the decisions that his character makes, I just was like, really? Now, back to the storyline, not only did I feel like it was repetitive, but I did feel like it was honestly a little uneven in terms of how it would cut from Adam Driver's part of the storyline, and then we cut to Michael Shannon, Joel Edgerton, Jaden, and Kirsten. You know, it's the way the movie balances the scenes that I did feel like it was pretty jumpy. Even though I wasn't really sure where the film was leading up to its climax, there were a few parts that I did find to be just a little bit predictable. And then the last problem I had with Midnight Special, unfortunately, is that even though it has that one scene I found mind-blowing in the climax, the climax really as a whole was very underwhelming. It just gave me that unsatisfying taste in my mouth. Like, I left the theater honestly pretty empty because of how this film ended. And it felt so unresolved. Like... 
the questions you were hoping to see answered, they weren't really answered. So like I said, you have to really pay attention to this film because they don't do the explaining for you, and which, that's cool honestly. I'm glad that they make you think, and I was able to understand where they were going, but there were certain things that weren't resolved, and I did feel like the movie just ended on a very empty note because the payoff that the film was trying to set up for the climax it honestly didn't pay off very well in my opinion so overall you guys i appreciate midnight special so it's like even though i'm disappointed at the same time i can't help but praise some of the things that it had but yeah overall Unfortunately, Midnight Special isn't really a movie I can really rewatch unless it's somehow playing on cable and there's really nothing else to watch. It's not that memorable, unfortunately, but for what it was, I appreciate it. I just wish the movie was better. So I'm going to give Midnight Special two and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Midnight Special. And so far, what is your favorite film from Jeff Nichols? So you guys, this is 22 Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.